It's worth just saying, actually, there was lots of talk about uh, new oil and gas drilling and so on and so forth. But actually, the new news that we've got from the government, that's rather little. Actually, it seems it seemingly just amounts to a new set uh, of data about precisely how carbon intensive some of the oil and gas that comes out of the North Sea is compared with other countries around the world. So here you have a measure of just how much, how many kilograms of carbon are produced by UK uh, oil and gas, uh, or rather this is just specifically gas, and then you've got other countries around the world. And you can see, look, all of those bars are a lot higher, and that for the government is part of the rationale for why they want to uh, endorse new drilling. But, you know, the new explorations had already uh, been announced, so this is not necessarily new news from the government. It does seem like it's just as much politics uh, as everything else. But it's worth asking the question, you know, how much difference would it make if you were going to have new oil and gas exploration? This is just showing you, and it's quite interesting because we're looking back through history here, this is showing you how much gas is produced uh, in the North Sea and then kind of going on into the future, that's a projection. Uh, and what you can also see, if I add this line here, that's domestic demand, OK? So that dashed line there is how much we are using within this country. And you can see there was a period back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when uh, we were producing more than we needed. So we were a net exporter. But right now, look, we have net imports. So that's where we are at the moment. You have much less gas being produced than we actually need, and we have to import uh, the difference. Raising the question, OK, you're probably wondering, if you were going to have more oil and gas uh, exploration, how much difference would it make to this line here? Would it mean that this would bounce up so it's above that dashed line? Want to have a look? This is the difference it would make. You can barely see it, can't you? That's the impact of potentially new exploration, and it makes the most marginal bit of difference, really underlining, you know, all of this kind of storm in a teacup is over this, this very small amount of extra gas exploration, which gets us still nowhere near what we're actually going to need. So it's worth just reflecting on that, both the government making a lot of noise about it, but also protesters, uh, they're talking about that tiny little bit there. Of course, very symbolic bit, but nonetheless pretty small. Um, but it's worth asking the question as well. You know, there's been lots of talk recently about carbon capture and storage. Why does that matter? It matters because this is how much carbon uh, we emit, or rather will by 2050, and it's really difficult to get it down. This is basically how net zero works, OK? So that's your carbon emissions by 2050. You can get it down by doing things like electrifying last parts of industry and, indeed, electricity production. That gets you down to about 300 and 66, look how that's come down. Uh, you can use things like hydrogen and so on. That gets you down even further. You can use things like demand. So reducing the amount of demand that we're doing, uh, use it, have for, for, uh, for energy, that gets you down even further. So look, the line comes down and down and down. Other things like changing land use gets you further down. You see you're eliminating your carbon emissions, but you're still left with this really tricky, about 100 megatons or so, 100 million tons of carbon emissions, how do you get rid of that? Well, that's where carbon capture and storage comes. You know, you're just taking it out of the chimneys, out of the atmosphere, and putting it away somewhere. But it's really expensive. So if you get that, look, then you're down to net zero. That, that's how net zero works. Ultimately, you know, a lot of complexity talked about that, but that, you've just seen how net zero actually works. But here's the issue. If you're going to do that, get that carbon in, you need to give people a pretty good price, pretty big incentive to do it. And right now in the UK, if you look at carbon prices, look, here's the carbon price in the EU right now. This is in dollars. It's kind of equivalised numbers because we don't know for sure what it's going to be in the future. There's how high it is in the US under the Inflation Reduction Act. How high is the UK carbon price? It's actually really low at the moment compared with the others, suggesting that if you're looking to try and set up a project like this, are you going to do it in the EU, in the US or the UK? Well, right now, the UK doesn't look very attractive. So that's carbon capture. And you've seen how it impacts net zero. Uh, but many of these issues, it's only the beginning of a long debate about all of this.